bow our heads, we say a prayer. Lord, thank you for the day. As we meditate, Lord God, help us to grow, help us to understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It, uh, it's a neat thing. Not just as a father, not just as a pastor, but as a Christian to see a young person willing to stand up and say, I believe in Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. I want to be a part of God's family and, 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 and to be a part of the kingdom work that is going on. It's a reason, it's a reason to rejoice. And, you know, I, I say to my girl, good job. Right? Good job. She worked hard. She learned all that stuff. She sat up here in front and was terrified. She did it. Good job. And I say, I like to pat myself on the back. Good dad. But you and I know very well that underneath and behind it all is something greater. It is the Lord God Almighty. And it's right to say good job, Rachel, and it's right for my wife and I to feel very proud of, of, of what God of what happens here today. But it is first and foremost a work of the Almighty God, is it not? Amen. 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 And underneath and behind it all, God claimed my little daughter's heart. Baptism, Sunday school lessons. How many worship services God took her and he said, this is mine. And so today, more than anything, is a reason to give thanks to the Almighty God. And it's true not just on Confirmation Day, but anytime something good happens. Yes, maybe it good happened through us. Maybe something good happened, blessings happened because of what happened in our lives. And it's a wonderful thing and we worked hard and yes, I should be proud of it. But to step back and to remember that underneath and behind all good things, who is at work? The Almighty God. And to remember to stop and give thanks to God for the good things that happen. And you and I know this, but we're going to talk about it today anyway. That when good things happen in our lives, to step back and to say, thank you, Lord, for what you have done. And on top of it, even to learn to say, thank you, God, when things don't look so great. We've been going through the Psalms and looking at what the Psalms tell us and what the Psalms teach us. This is the Old Testament prayer book, the Old Testament songbook, hymnal. And the Old Testament believers had these different Psalms that they would pull out on different occasions. And we're looking at how they prayed and how they dealt with and how they sang about these different issues. Talked about what do I, what do I sing, what do I pray when, uh, when my enemies attack me? What do I sing, what do I pray when, when life looks scary or when I don't know what to do and today... What do I sing? What do I pray when I'm thankful? Or maybe, how do I learn to be thankful even when things don't look so thankful? You with me? So Psalm 100, it's printed for you there. I'm not going to read it responsibly. I thought about it, but I changed my mind. We're going to read the first three verses. I'll read the first three verses, and then we'll pick up the last two. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. The picture there, that there, there's a title. You don't, I didn't print that for you, but there's a title that says, For Giving Thanks. It's an odd, odd little phrase there. It really refers to the Old Testament a uh, sacrifice, a uh, fellowship or peace sacrifice, the shalom sacrifice. It's the one that they would bring up when something good happened. It was when they, when they had a, a child was born, they would go up to the temple and they would offer a sacrifice. When they would get married, they would go up to the temple and they would offer a sacrifice. When they had a specially good crop, they would go up to the temple and they would offer this shalom sacrifice, this peace giving thanks thing. And they had to eat the whole meal. Nobody could leave until it was all gone. Yeah, so it was kind of a neat thing, neat picture. We're going to sit here and enjoy each other's company until everything is done, even if it takes us all day. And that's the picture here. So maybe this was the song, maybe this was the prayer that they prayed 
when they would have something good happen and they would go up to the temple and they would offer this sacrifice, maybe this was the prayer that they prayed. And the first part of that, you imagine the, the husband who just found a wife or the father who just had a child turning to everyone who's there and he's saying, he says to them, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth, worship the Lord, come on, worship the Lord with me. We do that, right? Something good happens in our life and we naturally want people to come and what? Celebrate with us. Someone gets married and what do you have? A big party, right? A uh, child gets confirmed and you invite a bunch of people over. You uh, have a birthday. Say, I made it to another year. Yay! And what do you do? You have a party. Uh, come celebrate with me, but to remember. To remember to give thanks. At the heart of it all, underneath, why is it that I made it through another year? Why is it that this good thing happened? Who was at work to make sure that these things took place? It was God. And to remember to give thanks to God. And then he gives us some reasons why. He says there, Give thanks to the Lord. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. And we are his. We'll stop there. I'll, I'll get the rest of the verse in a minute. He made us. We are his. So the first article. Rachel, confirmation stuff. First article. God gave us our eyes, ears, our all our members, my mind and all my abilities, right? He gives us everything that we have. We are his. He made us and he didn't make a mistake when he made us. He wasn't on the great Lego table in the sky and ran out of the good Legos and made you out of the leftover bits. He didn't fall asleep halfway through and not finish the job when he was making you. He didn't accidentally stumble upon you when he was trying to do something better. Oh, whoops. He made us just the way that he wanted us to be. And that doesn't always feel so good and look so good because all of us have things. Why does my back always hurt? Why do I always have headaches? How come my life turned out this way? And yet God sets us in life and makes us the way that he wants us to be because that is the best way for us to be. And sometimes we get in our head all these other things. We look at someone else. We look at older siblings. We look at co-worker. We look at neighbor. We look at friends and classmates and we begin to say to ourselves, how come I'm not? How come I'm not? And I'm like, it's easy to be grumpy and discontent and miserable because we aren't as good as so-and-so or our life didn't turn out like so-and-so. But to remember that God made me and placed me in my life where he wants me to be. He made us. Not as a mistake, but he made us. And we belong to him. We're his. And then he goes on and he says, we are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. That makes me think of the second article about Jesus, right? Who redeemed us not with gold or silver, but with, with what? His holy, precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. I was a sheep, go astray. I don't do the things I'm supposed to do. I don't think the things I'm supposed to think. I don't behave the way I'm supposed to behave. I have bad attitudes and lousy thoughts and and terrible things that happen in my and sometimes I do them sometimes I resist but I still think about it I hold grudges in my heart and I don't treat people the way that I should I'm a sheep that has gone astray but notice what it says there we are his people the sheep of his pasture he went out by his blood on the cross on the cross and won our salvation for us claimed us back as his sheep claimed, made us his own by washing away all of our sins and as his sheep, what do we know that God is going to do? He's going to love us. He's going to take care of us. He's going to feed us. He's going to lead us to still waters, quiet pastures. And it makes me think of your confirmation verse. Exodus 14, 14. God will fight for you. You need only be still. You're his sheep. I don't need to fuss. I don't need to fight. I don't need to worry. I don't need to be afraid. Because what does God promise as his sheep? He promises that he will protect. 
And all I need to do is wait for the good shepherd to protect me, his sheep. I am his sheep. And he will always take care of me. Reasons to be thankful even when things in life don't seem so thankful. You with me? He made me. He put me here. I belong to him. He didn't make a mistake when he made me. And then he redeemed me and he will always take care of me and he's prepared a place for me in heaven. I have reasons to be thankful even when life kind of stinks. And then it's almost like he says, like the, the, the guy who's praying the prayer or, or singing the song, he says, all right, now let's make this official. And he says, we're going to go into the king's court. I want all of you to celebrate with me because of this good thing that happened. Now let's go up into the king's court and we're going to celebrate officially, so to speak. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Why? For the Lord is good and his love endures for a little while. Forever. His faithfulness continues for a few years through all generations. Forever. Through all generations. The promises that God makes to each one of us, the promises that God makes to you, Rachel, are not ones that disappear after a few years. There isn't an expiration date. After, after 24 hours, you can't use it anymore. It lasts for a lifetime. A lifetime makes me think of that little phrase that we like to throw back and forth as a congregation. It lasts forever. God's love, God's faithfulness, God's goodness. God is good all the time. And that will never change. And even when my life is in chaos or my life doesn't seem to be going so well, God is still good. And God is still faithful. And God's promises hold true. And I am still his sheep. And I am still his child. Being thankful recognize that every good thing that happens comes from the Lord God Almighty. That every good thing that happens in my life is a reason for me to stop and to remember to be thankful to the Lord God for what he has done. But even when things aren't so great, to remember that the greater things, the promises of God, the salvation of God, never fades, can never be taken away. Be thankful even for that problem is that we forget that, don't we? Life gets busy. Life gets hard. Things happen and we, we, we forget sometimes that God really is always faithful and is always with us. And so we need that constant reminder. We need to constantly be reminded by the word of God that God is faithful all the time, that God is good all the time, that I am forgiven in Jesus Christ. The other day I went in and Rachel wanted to paint her room. And so we started to paint her room and we moved the dresser and there was this whole wall of sticky notes behind the dresser on the wall. I think she was a little shocked. She didn't want me to look at them too closely. I think these are notes to herself, right? But I remember one of them. I won't share all of them because I think she'd be embarrassed, but I saw one. Makes you cry as a daddy. Makes you cry as a pastor. One of those sticky notes said, read the whole Bible. We need that. To read it. Not just in church. But to read it. Because world circumstances, sinful nature, will tell us that God is not with you. God does not love you, but it isn't true. Life will tell you that you have a reason to be discontent, dissatisfied, unthankful. It's not true. You and I, who are God's sheep, have every reason, even on the worst of days, to give thanks to the Lord. Call upon the Lord. Be thankful to Him. Because He has done so much. For Jesus' sake.